Welcome to SciTech Culture with Steve Kern and Ben Warner, where we examine science, technology, and culture in the 21st century. Visit our website at SciTechCulture.com. Hello and welcome to SciTech Culture. My name is Ben Warner and I'm joined once again by my good friend and colleague, Steve Kern. How are we today, Steve? Do you, are you feeling addicted to your phone today or not? Uh, well, after seeing this topic, I feel very addicted. I, <laughs> I was feeling fine before that. So we have uh, saw this uh, story on the ABC um, website uh, with, the t- with the headline, you're probably not addicted to your smartphone, but you likely use it too much. Um, what was interesting, I thought, in this article was that, you know, obviously there's been lots of discussion around how we use our phones, the fact that um, you're more tempted to just, you know, use it 90 times a day, you know, check in, you know, constantly open it, constantly checking what notifications you've got, what's, who's tweeting you, who's emailing you, who's messaging you, um, looking up news, checking Facebook, whatever it is that you're doing. And there's a tendency to overuse the phone um, to the point where it goes beyond just um, responding to a notification. You're actually going in and hitting refresh or whatever to, um, <laughs> to see if anything's happened. And that you know, I think there's a lot of behaviour like that out there. That, no question at all. Um, that, that's not even um, part of it. Um, part of the, the issue here. But is it actually addiction, um, or is it just obsessive behaviour? And the the fine line I think between the two. Um, and I think this is an an idea that I hadn't really thought of before. I read this was. It's not actually the device that you're addicted to. It might just be the services that you've installed on it that um, uh, are causing that addiction, or is it just that you're you've built a habit um, that um, rather than a, an addiction? Because an addiction is um, just to clarify. Uh, and it says in this article, the WHO classifies it as a dependence on a substance. Um, or and it um, has physical and behavioral dependence, um, you know, uh, sort of traits. So you would uh, have to be physically and behaviorally dependent on it. Do you think um, a smartphone co- could fit into that category, or is it just you know bad habits and obsessive habits that we've developed? Oh, well, two things on that: it's definitely not the phone. Nobody's connected to the phone; it's the apps. Yeah. And- I think the other thing uh, is that that's just using definitions for the sake of definitions. There's there's no question, and I'm not talking about in my mind, they've shown that Facebook, you know, elicits dopamine responses. That's addiction. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't mean everyone who uses Facebook is addicted and it doesn't mean anyone who checks Facebook 15 times a day is addicted. <laughs> but it means there's a very high likelihood that there's an addiction there. And uh, just because it doesn't involve a substance um, doesn't mean it's not addictive. And because that, that definition is from, I don't know, before we had smartphones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But what about, um, uh, I, I guess there are certain people that are more susceptible to addiction than others. Um, yeah. And perhaps in that context, if those types of people, um, it would be, um, like you said, because it's triggering the same responses that um, it could be an issue for them. Uh, but, yeah, again... Well, under the definition in the article, mm. gambling wouldn't be classified an addiction because there's no substance. Yeah. So I, I, I don't really know. I, that, that, that article, to me personally, read like somebody with a smartphone addiction pretending they didn't have one. <laughs> but do you think that... Um, uh, it, Okay, so the test then would be maybe, you know, taking the physical substances aside argument that if um, you're gambling, a phone, whatever, you have to have the ability to walk away from it uh, without um, that urge to go back and do it or check in on it. And I'm just wondering if uh, do do phones actually elicit that kind of a a response or, or is it... So, for instance, so let's look at it from a different perspective. If you didn't have any social media apps on your phone, you didn't have any messaging apps on your phone uh, or email or whatever, and you just had um, a camera and uh, the phone app and, um, you know, some note-taking stuff or whatever, or would you be checking in on your phone 20 times a day? Um, you know, I guess... No, but the, the classic... Uh, you know, test is, you know, 
you're going out for 30 minutes somewhere just, you know, and then, you know, you realise you've forgotten your phone mm -hmm. and you get that moment of panic, even though you don't need your phone for that 30 minutes. That is a response that's elicited. It's probably quite weak in terms of addiction, but yeah. that's that's a uh, behavioural response with a, uh, with a physiological, uh, I guess, mechanism beneath mm. it. And that, that's what underpins addiction. So I, I would tend to say maybe it's much lower than, say, you know, nicotine or alcohol or gambling. But uh, I think people are very attached to their phones. And I remember stories like this uh, before the days of smartphones. So phones, exactly what you're saying, and you probably go and look up some of the research papers back in those days where they were saying, yeah, people are actually addicted to their phones. So mm. I think I think it's device, you know, it's, it's probably no different to uh, having a blanket, you know, a security blanket as a child or a teddy bear or something like that is the actual phone itself. But the apps are where the, probably the real addiction lies. But it's, it's a very... Uh, it's a very interesting and once again new field because we haven't seen this sort of stuff before and mm. smartphone addiction certainly has only been around for probably about seven, eight years. I, I'm sure there's been lots of discussion around, um, you know, how much tech giants in particular social media um, platforms uh, do everything within their power to design the platform to, um, you know, make sure that you don't leave it. Um, Sounds like gambling, doesn't yeah. it? Yep. Um, and that's, and that's without question that that's what they want because obviously the more, the maximum amount of time you spend on it, it means more money for them and, uh, they learn more about you, et cetera, et cetera. That's uh, like people who sell fizzy drinks, doesn't it? Yep. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, uh, so they're, they're just, uh, using tried and true techniques from, uh, from yesteryear. <laughs> I, I'm just saying that, you know, to deny that there's any sort of addictive input or any intention to addict us, or, or I shouldn't say addict, maybe we shouldn't use that word, but to encourage us to use something frequently, mm. whether it's food, whether it's entertainment, whether it's uh, a smartphone, I think that, uh, you know, you really have to accept that <laughs> that's the name of the game in business. And any business that doesn't want you to spend as much time associating with them as possible, mm. uh, probably isn't going to be a very big business, are they? Yeah, absolutely. And I guess um, if we start to wrap it up, um, what about at the higher level of, um, you know, the apples and the, you know, pro I'm probably thinking more of Apple actually and probably, I mean, Google in a sense, but they're, they're predominantly a service. But say mm. like a company like Samsung that produces hardware, Apple produces hardware, um, Microsoft is more services, but they do produce hardware as well. What, res given that they produce the hardware to enable all of this other stuff to occur, are they part of the um, issue in terms of resolving this particular problem? Because, again, w w what do you do with that? Because you you want to build all this functionality into this hardware, and um, what you're gonna you can't just not encourage people to use it or in, a, in the way you're, um, you're uh, setting it up. Um, is it again a question of, um, you know, um, sort of um, self-discipline or encouraging discipline when you're teaching others to use these devices? Uh, look, I, you know, I'm not, qualified. <laughs> I'm not qualified to comment. I mean, you know, should you ban cigarettes altogether or should you just put big warning labels on the box? You know, I, you know, I, I don't know. Mm. I, don't, I don't know. Do they have a responsibility to uh, tell us that your phone is dangerous? I think that's just seems ridiculous to me. Mm -hmm. But that probably would have seemed ridiculous fifty years ago to uh, put a warning on a cigarette packet. I, I don't know. And I think once again, it'll just depend on where people want to go with this. But I don't think people are going to complain. I think people mm. love their smartphones. I think people like being highly habitual users yep. of smartphones and uh, if any people do have addictive behaviours that lead to some sort of smartphone related addiction, it's probably relatively harmless mm. as long as they don't do it while they're driving <laughs> or send texts when they're drunk. So I, I don't know. 
Yeah. I don't know, Ben. We, we can throw that out there to uh, the SciTech culture people to see what they think. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. If, if nothing else, perhaps we can uh, finish on uh, this image of the Apple packaging coming with a big wa- nasty warning label on top of it. I'm sure the Apple marketing department would absolutely love that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe every time you go to the home screen, you know, like uh, you get a bit message reminding you to put your phone down for at least 59 minutes every hour. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. It'll be, uh, it'd be a funny world if that actually occurred. <laughs> <laughs> It's not impossible. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, so um, we'll wrap it up there. And uh, so don't forget our website, SciTechCulture.com. You can get all of our links and content there. Subscribe to our channels, Vimeo, YouTube, etc., where you can watch us or you can listen to our audio podcast. Um, and uh, we hope you enjoy all the uh, content that we have on our website. All right, so that's it for this episode. We'll catch you next time.